So now let's see Corel in action for putting and getting content, user-generated content that can be distributed in a democratic fashion and the load for both serving as a metadata server as well as the content server can get naturally distributed because of the way the Corel system works in managing the sloppy DHT. Let's say Nomi, who's at node number 30, has some interesting content, and she wants to share it with the world. So what she does, she creates a unique signature, a key, for this content by hashing it. And let's say that the key that she generated for this content is 100. So now Nomi wants to put the key 100 and the value 30, indicating that this node has the content corresponding to this key 100. She wants to put it out on the internet. And so she uses the Coral system and she uses the Coral keybase routing. The node that she would like to store this key 100 is node 100 corresponding to David's computer. Okay, because the David's computer has node ID 100, so that's the place I would like to keep it. But we are following the Coral's key-based routing algorithm. So Naomi, what she's going to do is going to make a series of RPC calls to put 130 key-value pair. And she finds that none of the intermediate nodes are either full or loaded. And finally, she reaches David's computer. David also says, my node is neither full nor loaded. How can it be? Because she just created this content, 100. So this 100, key 100, is not known to the world. So nobody is at this point serving as a metadata server for this particular key. So David is the right place to keep it. So David hosts this particular key value pair, 130. Jacques finds out that there is this interesting video whose signature is 100. So he wants to get it. And he knows that the likely place where it is contained is node number 100. But once again, he is going to use the Coral keybase routing. And he's doing a get call. And the get call follows the same keybase routing algorithm of having the distance to the destination. And so we make a whole bunch of RPC calls, finally get to the destination itself, because none of the intermediate nodes have this key value pair. So we get to David's computer, and David says, yes, I do have the key value pair 130, and here is the value that you're looking for associated with the key that you're asking about, and the value is 30, indicating that 30 is the node that has the content that corresponds to this key 100. That's what Jacques is going to get back. So when Jacques gets his response from, from David, that the value is 30, that value indicates the node ID from which Jacques can download the content corresponding to the key 100. And so that's Naomi's computer. So Jacques goes to Naomi's computer and gets the content corresponding to key 100. Naomi sends the content, so Jacques is now happy. He's got the content that corresponds to 100. But Jacques is a nice guy too. So he says, well, I have the content. Since I have the content, I can also serve as a proxy for Nomi. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the key value pair 100 corresponding to this content that is now mirrored over here and say that the value is 60 indicating that I'm willing to serve as a proxy for the same content. So I'm going to do a put operation. And this put operation is going to go down. And this put operation is going to use the same key-based routing algorithm. And when it gets to David, David might say, look, I'm not interested in holding more than one value for this particular key. And so if he says that I don't want to do it, then I have to retract my steps and pick an intermediate node which said that it is willing because it is neither loaded nor full for this particular key 100. So it's willing to serve as a metadata server. We already have one metadata server, but this guy is willing to do that for only one value. And therefore, this guy becomes a new metadata server for the same key 100. 
So in, in this metadata server, new metadata server, we've got this entry 160 also stored. So now there are two metadata servers that can potentially answer queries that concern this video 100. Now if a third guy, Kamal, comes to know about this cool video that is now propagating on the internet, and he finds that the key for that is 100, he can, once again, query the codal system for that video, and he is following the same key-based routing algorithm of Coral in trying to get towards David's node, which is node 100. So he's going to follow that, but when he does that, he hits this intermediate node, and this guy says, you know what, I've got the key that you're looking for, and the value that is associated with this key is 60. So Kamal doesn't have to go all the way to this metadata server. He can get the answer for his query, get 100, from this intermediate node itself, which returns a different value, different from Nomi's address, namely node ID 60 that corresponds to the new Good Samaritan, Jacques, who is also willing to serve as a proxy for the same video content. So 60 gets returned to Kamal, and Kamal can then go to Jacques and get the content from, from Jacques, and that way you see that the origin of this particular video, which started with Nomi, is now propagated to Jacques, so the origin server need not get overloaded. And of course, Kamal will turn around and become a good Samaritan himself and say that he's willing to serve as a proxy also. So his key value pair entry gets into another intermediate node. Now we've got three nodes that can serve as metadata server for this particular key 100. Not just the original metadata server node, David's computer, but intermediate nodes that also have become part of the metadata server network for this particular key 100. And similarly, there is no origin server overload also because now the content itself has gotten distributed in several proxies. And all of these proxies have dynamically gotten the content and have shared their willingness to serve as proxies. So if a new node wants to get the same video 100, when it makes its get operation, that get operation is going to traverse the network and either hit David himself or hopefully one of the intermediate metadata servers and that way the requests for the actual content may go to different content providers dynamically as the system evolves. So as a result, you can see that the metadata server load is distributed and the origin server is also not stressed. That's the nice thing about the Coral sloppy DHT approach. So the key takeaway in the Coral approach is that even though an individual request may have a little bit more latency because we're not trying to reach the desired destination directly, but going through some intermediate hops, in particular having the distance to the desired destination, you're going to increase the latency a little bit, but we are doing that in the common good that in these kinds of environments, giant scale services, big data, large numbers of users, and content suddenly becoming popular, all of these dynamism has to be dealt with in a system that is as vibrant as the internet. And Coral is a step towards that by reducing the stress on the origin server as well as reducing the stress on the meta servers by naturally distributing it.